Hey everybody, John Craig here with Performance Plus Tennis. Welcome to today's video. We're going to break down the serve of young Danish player Holger Rune. Before we get started, let's give a big shout out to Court Level Tennis and 12KBG Tennis for their contributions to today's video. Let's get started taking a look here at the serve. And first of all, I just love his setup. It's so simple. Um, he's got a perfect alignment with his feet. He's got the perfect continental grip. The angle of his racket and the setup here, which most people don't pay attention to, I do, is a slight little angle here. I love that position. It's really going to help him keep the racket closed and avoid the waiter's tray position as he goes back into his serve. Everything looks fantastic here. And then as he moves into his serve, you'll see how his weight shifts off the front foot to the back foot. You can see that the front toe is risen here a little bit, and the back heel is down nice and flat. The foot's flat, and here he comes into his move. And this is where... He does fantastic, perfect here. He's raising the tossing arm while he's lagging the playing arm. And this is really important that you do this because it's going to help lead you into a good, strong trophy position. Okay. So here we are at the point of release. The ball is leaving his hand. The racket is trailing. Weight still clearly on the back foot. And now he's going to continue to raise that left arm up. And this is what's going to pull his body and coil him into a beautiful trophy position. Now he goes down in the legs, and look at this beautiful position. He's completely loaded up. When the ball gets to the top, he is completely loaded up, and that's beautiful positioning underneath the ball. Okay. Key thing here, so many recreational players try to put their racket behind their head. Don't worry about that. Look where his racket is. It's on the right side of his body. It's in a perfect position. His elbow position is perfect. He's ready to launch this throw up to the ball. It looks absolutely perfect. Okay. You can see now that the heel, both heels have risen on both feet. Looks perfect. He's got great flex in his legs. Looks beautiful. Everything looks fantastic. And let's take a look here at a topic that I love to talk about, and that is ball toss height. Look where the ball is at the top, and let's just advance to where he makes contact. And let's take a look there and draw another line. And you can see that the distance between the two lines is approximately the length of a racket. So it's fairer to say that he's probably letting the, the ball drop 24, 22, 24 inches to contact. And that's really important because he needs the time to place the ball, see that the ball is up there, get into this trophy position, make his move and go through a full range of motion and attack the ball and fly up there and attack the ball and get it up there at the apex, at the at not the apex of the toss, but the apex of his reach. And that's just beautiful. Now, the optical illusion here is that if we just watch his serve, look how the ball almost looks like it doesn't drop at all. See that? Let's go back again, take a look at it. It looks like he plays at the top, but if you look at it in slow motion, Clearly, the ball is making that drop about 24 inches to contact. Okay, so as a side note, I'm much more an advocate of getting the ball up a little bit more, especially in the developmental stages, so that you can measure the ball, get through a full range of motion, get into this beautiful balance, and then really get up to contact. Okay, next up, once he sees the ball's up there and he's going to make his move, he's going to have a tremendous drive with his leg. He's going to drive those legs up, and he's going to simultaneously pull that left hand around in a semicircle. Watch it. And come around and get right up there into the ball. And what's beautiful about this movement is that when he's in this trophy position, I'm going to show you just how beautiful his shoulder rotation is. When he's in this position, shoulder angle is beautiful. Let's advance to where his contact is. His shoulders are in the same angle. But they've reversed. The right shoulder's high and the left shoulder's low. Where in his trophy position, the left shoulder was high and the right shoulder was low. So he has tremendous shoulder over shoulder rotational action that gets him up to the ball. Okay, that's really triggered by the leg drive and the left arm pulling away. Okay, really very important. Okay, so here he goes. And now when he's coming up to the ball, look here how his left hand and the racket are at very similar uh, angles or heights here at the bottom of the racket drop look how his left hand is almost matching so if you're being told to keep your racket arm or to keep your tossing arm up keep your tossing arm up trust me that's bad advice you definitely need to get that tossing arm stretched up 
that helps you coil, but then you got to pull it away while you push with those legs so you can get this beautiful racket drop. Okay. And speaking of racket drop, this is tough to do, uh, but look how his hand is lower than his elbow. That would be ideal if we can do that. Not everyone can do that. I actually can't get that kind of range of motion anymore in my serve motion, but I uh, used to be able to do it quite easily, but can't do that anymore. But that's beautiful racket drop. And now watch where the left hand is. The left hand is holding balance here. It's firm. If you were to push against it, it would resist your push. And here he comes up on the razor's edge. It looks like he's going to cut the ball in half right now. It looks like he's got a machete in his hand. And if that wasn't orange, he just cut it right in half. Okay. But as he gets up on the ball, and we'll see here as, he gets, as he's attacking it, that long axis pronation will happen right there as he's extending. Long axis pronation squares up on the ball pronates right past, right through the ball, and now we see the strings facing the side and the back towards the camera. So we've got tremendous long axis rotation or pronation from his shoulder. So quite a beautiful serve. He gets great height. Look at how high he is. And he comes down on that left foot. Beautiful balance. Gets ready for the response of the return. Okay? Beautiful serve. So let's take again here and take a look from side view. And you know, oftentimes I get questions, how far out in front should I toss the ball? Because we should toss the ball out in front. We should toss the ball out in front, of course. But let's take a look here and see where he places the ball. And let's take a look here. And there it is at the apex. And let's just draw a line here from the ball down to the court. And that's probably a foot to maybe 16 inches in front of the baseline. So the ball is clearly in front of him here. You can see that he's looking up on a slight angle to the ball, okay? But watch what happens. As he drives and pushes, he lunges up into the ball. And look how he's now underneath the ball. So let's clear the lines. Look how he's underneath the ball. So now his contact is more above him, okay? And that's really important. You want to feel like you're underneath the ball and swinging up into contact more than swinging forward, okay? Because once you, if you say you're making contact, he's making contact here at this point, obviously, because the ball's sitting there. Once you get a little further past that, there's only one place your arm can be going, right? And that's down. So that's going to pull the ball down. So you've really got to feel like you're swinging up from underneath into contact. And the racket's rising, 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 rising as it comes up into contact. Very, very important. Okay. And let's take a look here again at his serve. What I love about Holger's serve is its simplicity. Okay, he's got a platform stance, very, very simple movement. No extra movements at all. Very clean, very efficient, uh, very compact, and yet also very powerful. So it's going to be very fun to see how good his serve gets over the years. He's only 20 years old now. From the deuce cord view here, he's going to be hitting a what I would call a flat slice serve, where he's going to come up and across the ball. Look how he's coming from left to right, hitting what I call a flat slice. He's slicing it, but he's hitting it fairly flat as well so that he can get that little extra spin on there to get the ball to drop down on the court. So, to conclude, I would say that what you want to do is make sure you check your alignment, make sure you've got a good sideways alignment with the continental grip, make sure you shift your weight to the back foot when your tossing arm is rising, only when the ball leaves your arm, hand here, and you're, and you're continuing to raise the tossing arm, do your legs shift into this balanced trophy position. Keep that racket on the right side of your body. Resist the temptation to put it behind your head. It will go by itself. Promise. Okay? And then use your legs and your left arm to rotate you around. Oh, shoulder over shoulder. Pull you around. And then use that left hand to hold the balance. Attack the ball. Pronate. And go through. Okay? So those are just some key things that you can work on to really improve your serve performance. Um, Give us a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Um, and if you'd like to have your serve evaluated in the same way I've done here, um, there's a link in the description down below. And if you click that link, it'll take you to a place on my website where you can um, have uh, your serve evaluated by me. You can take a look at it and give you some really good advice on how to improve your serve performance. Thanks so much for watching today's lesson, and we'll see you in the next video.